This is Tom Asper with the Viper Report. Uh, today I want to take a little deeper look into the stochastic confirmer or stoke confirmer, uh, Jerry A's creation of a modification of the stochastic uh, originally developed by George Lane. Some of the things I've observed uh, in following the indicator and may help you and, uh, and may raise some more questions. So we'll look at a different few per different periods of time. I kind of shut down the volume here. Of course, the volume is also included here, you know, green to red. So one thing, of course, we look for is divergences. You know, so we had a really, uh, you know, a positive signal down in here, um, and then, uh, you know, a confirmed buy signal at that point. I um, had a nice run up for about eight bars, um, a, a deviation flip. That took it, and I've seen these sort of developments here. We get a, a pretty orderly pullback. If you're looking at a daily chart, you know, it would not be surprising. One, two, three, four, five, six, you know, and then the seventh bar, we get a new pop to the upside, you know, right as we sort of meet, meet the mid zone between the upper linear regression channel and the lower re re linear regression channel. So once that emerges, you, you sort of expect to get, you know, ex extended as we did here, but oftentimes we look for divergences. So, you know, the futures moved even higher. I guess this high was right around uh, uh, 39.72, and we made it up to, um, you know, 40.11. At this point, before we got a flip here, uh, the stochastic confirmer turned negative, and we got a pretty decent correction. Uh, when you see signals that, you know, um, come outside or, you know, above the oversold uh, extremes or below the overbought extremes, you know, I often treat them as suspect because we often see this sort of formation. Drop back into the green zone here and had another nice run to the upside. You can see this nice divergence here. Uh, we try to mention those and of course the moving averages flip back to positive, you know, as did the volume which was pretty close to the deviation flip too. And uh, you know, we get, uh, sometimes you just see these short sort of little little top formations. You know, more oftentimes in a strong move up, I've observed that you get a pullback, you know, into this sort of mid zone in here, and then you get another push to the upside as we did back here. So, and oftentimes when you get uh, the Stoke Confirmer flipping positive and it never made into the the oversold levels into the green zone as I refer to it uh, they're often a little more suspect as most of you probably noticed occasionally we go through these sort of choppy periods you know a buy a deviation flip here uh, a confirmed buy you know and then a deviation flip in a sell you know all within a pretty narrow range so oftentimes the stochastic confirmer can help you, you maybe, uh, you know, uh, gain some insight into what the market's doing um, as helpful. And I will try to draw more of these in uh, in the reports I send out. You see this sort of resistance either up or down and the still confirmer. And so in this instance, you know, the volume turned positive, you know, right here, next bar, we got, you know, a confirmed uh, buy signal and, uh, you know, then the stochastic confirmer moved through that downtrend at the start of another move to the upside. In my experience, this is sort of a familiar pattern. Got a nice move up, you know, get above, you know, the uh, the stark bands here. So anytime you, you see that, usually you can expect to see the moving market consolidate. So above the stark band we pulled down for three bars you know held above even the short-term moving average here and then started again above the stark band you know and so we went from you know negative well above the red zone to back to positive just below the red zone you know another push above the red zone and then we get a third peak in here in divergence analysis it's really important Multiple divergences are generally more important than just single divergences.
the stochastic uh, firmer was pretty negative for this whole stretch. It started to roll over. We got a deviation flip here and then a confirmed sell signal. And, uh, you know, we had a pretty good slide for all this week. Um, down here, we got down into, you know, some support that goes back into, you know, the prior period here. So it wasn't surprising to see a deviation flip. Stochastic confirmer was consistent with that. We got a nice little bullish divergence here in a moving averages and volume turned positive. But, you know, usually after a significant decline, you have to, a significant decline or a significant rally, you have to watch for the next move against that trend. So this was sort of a classic fake out couple of day move. Um, don't remember the news, but I'm sure there was something that got market was was encouraged for it. This is in uh, August. You know, this is right when rates were starting to head back up, and most of our stuff was turning negative, And bam, they hit it again. Yeah. You know? So after a first leg down here, we moved sideways just to rebound in the downtrend. You notice that we had big red bars. You know, indicating you know. It, quite a bit of heavy selling pressure so once you see a pattern of that you need to see something really on the upside to counter that so big drop here you know on Friday that must, might have been uh, uh, no it wasn't a jobs report but some end of the month economic report bam you know you had a little you know starting to diverge here you had a deviation flip and then a confirmed sell signal another push to the downside you know the divergence was broken at that point so that favored more declines um, you know a similar pretty strong rally in the Stoke confirmer but right back up where you'd expect it to fail at the, the 40 the 20 period EMA and uh, you know we, we got a deviation flip but no confirmed buy signal uh, until we got a negative deviation flip It often appears that when you get a strong rally in the Stoke Confirmer, that it's usually a, a move that can last more than a couple of days. So we had a really strong move up here and, uh, you know, peaked out. Um, we had a buy signal there and made it, it looks like up to the first target and then just kept moving sideways. And we stayed up there into the following week before things started to reverse back to the downside. So once again, you know, mainly the, the bars, the candle bars indicate selling, not buying. So um, we had another pretty, you know, prolonged decline, you know, a uh, little beef, you know, five bar rally, another push to the downside, you know, um, you know, tried to, you know, form a rally. Uh, we got up here, you know, pretty quick off the, uh, you know, went from uh, roughly uh, 3695 up to, uh, you know, 3808. And uh, once again, another little divergence here. And uh, so it's really kind of important. You got overbought here, you know, came right into, you know, um, some of the pivot support levels. Another push to the downside, and then a rally, new high here, divergence in the soak confirmer, and uh, you know, often part of a topping process, you see this deviation flip. Next bar is actually higher, you know, and uh, but then the selling continued. There was another preponderance of large red candles in this decline as we started to head into October. Um, and then a, finally a kind of a, a flush and finally we see a big, you know, green bar that, uh, you know, is often a sign that, okay, maybe we're finally seeing a change in trend. If you, you know, we didn't, hadn't seen any quite a buying spurt like that. And, uh, you know, we got up, uh, you know, stochastic confirmer, no divergences there, got a pullback to just below the mid range. And then both of them, you know, the uh, Stoke confirmer and the volume turned positive right there, and um, and then it was sort of a you know a gradual uptrend from there. 
we broke that downtrend, but you know the uh, it was a pretty shallow choppy decline. We had a deviation flip here from this buy signal, um, a short-term sell, and then you know uh, a deviation flip with a confirmed buy signal, and you know oversold stochastic confirmer, you know gave it a little more uh, credence, and uh, you can see we you know um, had a pretty good run. Um, this buy signal, I guess, was around uh, uh, 3747. So we got up to, uh, you know, uh, 3923. You know, um, we did have, see another uh, um, divergence here. Um, and uh, so you can, you know, the only way you can really tell is if you, you know, and of course, you, this could have gone up above it, but once you start to see it right around in here, and then you look at the candle and the deviation flip, you know, that sort of, you know, what often happens you get like a rebound of one, two, three, four, and then the fifth bar, we get a confirmed sell signal and a pretty decent drop from 3872, you know, down to uh, 3700. So let's take you through a couple more cycles. Uh, you both on the up and the down. Um, wasn't too clear here. We had a divergence, but not really. You know, the uh, my experience in looking at divergences for decades. You know, the the length of the divergence usually is a sign or an indication of the strength of the move. So, you know, you see this sort of spacing on a daily or a weekly divergence. Then instead of hours like we saw here, you're looking at, uh, you know, a divergence that will form over a couple of weeks or, you know, a few months. That usually leads to a bigger move in the opposite direction. So right in here, you know, not really conclusive up in here. Got lots of signals. And we got this high up here, no divergence. So we had high here. And a higher high up there and uh, you can see that once again not really too many stark band signals on the upside until the next decline when you see a sell signal here we just kind of bumping into the moving average but you also start to see a divergence and you kind of move out of the out of the green zone you know that's often an early warning of a change in trend and sure enough, we did get a couple of strong bars up here and the volume, you know, which is, uh, you know, volume just turned positive here. You can see this green down here. And once again, um, one bar before the uh, deviation flip and a couple bars before the strong confirmed buy signal. I took off the... Uh, price targets here just to illustrate you know it's important to see the the extent of the bars so we had back in here we had two bars and then a couple of bars in between and then a third and fourth and they're not daily and uh, you know you see that sort of thing it, it is sort of a warning even you know to that uh, a reversal in trend is likely and you know occasionally shows uh, let's see back up in here you start to get this really extreme tails you know, for example, this bar had a, a range of 41.52 to 40, um, 41.86 rather to 41.14, and so you know it did move, you know, above the band here at the high, and then you know sort of set up, you know, for you know a divergence uh, on the downside. And a pretty decent slide, you know, for once again from up about 41.64 down to uh, 200 points down into 39.64 or so. A uh, couple more formations, you know, uh, when you see a rebound, you know, or, you know, often in a downtrend, you just see it right, 
reach the middle zone here and flip. Then we back there, we got into another mid zone level and not a much of price appreciation. And of course, we got a re resume slide at that point. Heart, when you see this huge choppy range in here, makes the deviation flips or the stochastic and firmer a little more negative or a little more hard to use, certainly. Let's get up to the current action here, which has also been pretty choppy. A number of signals um, here we got quite oversold. Um, in fact, the price decline was not as dramatic as the decline in the Stoke Confirmer. And I got right back down here, flipped up, quickly made it to, you know, back to the red zone, and then, uh, you know, moved back up towards the highs, but really the confirmer you know was not that impressive so you know we got another stark band warning here you know oftentimes if you see you know um, a bar where you're moving above the stark band and that uh, occurs the same way as a confirmed buy signal or a sell signal you know that your upside may be limited as uh, I think Jerry mentioned in one of his charts he shared with you so you know, as we end out the week here, and we're trying to bounce off the uh, um, the 20 period EMA, 4150. We're trading at 4156. We had a big reversal bar here going into 2 p.m. And, uh, you know, so Stochastic Confirmer has got back to the red zone. So, and of course, you know, looking at, you know, um, so yeah, when you when you see a market up here, you start of, you know, the the pivot here for the week has really been, for the most case, limiting. You know, we had a good move up, you know, um, you know, on Thursday, very strong AD numbers, but uh, didn't stay too long above um, the pivot. Uh, next week, we can see where the pivot is going to be right around forty one forty six, and. Uh, so that'll be a level to watch. Uh, I'll try to do another one on the pivots and maybe, a, you know, elicit the help of uh, the, the pivot master, Jerry. So hope you found this enjoyable and uh, send me your feedback as always at Tom at Viper Thank you.